Moses parting the Red Sea. Ancient historians are known to mix fact and fiction and to exaggerate historical events, but often these accounts start out as real occurrences. Now, can a new investigation use supercomputing to bring the past to life and reveal the scientific explanation for one of the Bible's greatest legends? Is this a fanciful story designed to illustrate the power of God, or is it based on real events? Experts are searching for a scientific explanation to the ancient Bible story in which Moses parts the Red Sea. Moses is the leader of the Hebrews who are enslaved by the Egyptian pharaohs, and he is commanded by God to go forth and free his people from bondage. Moses attempts to lead his people out of Egypt, but with the pharaoh's army of 600 chariots in hot pursuit, he finds his escape blocked by the Red Sea. Moses is stuck, so what does Moses do? He asks God for intervention, and God parted the Red Sea, and through they went. The water crashed back down on Pharaoh's army just as they tried to pursue. Now, this is a powerful and visceral image, but did it really happen? And if so, how? Scientists at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado are determined to find out. First, they need to know where Moses might have crossed. This was long believed to be at the Gulf of Suez. But there is a possible alternative location. The Hebrew Bible refers to a body of water known as Yam Suf, which translates roughly into Sea of Reeds. It implies a much shallower setting where plants would grow in the water. And perhaps that's the body of water that Moses crossed rather than the Red Sea. The Gulf of Suez is a long body of water connected to the Red Sea, but in biblical times, it may have actually been part of the Red Sea itself. The Gulf of Suez is like a trench that descends down to just over 180 feet at its deepest point, but toward the north, it becomes much shallower. This shallow northern region offers investigators hope of finding Moses' crossing point. And when they cross-reference the depth charts with historical records, they find evidence that the region can sometimes become totally dry. In the late 18th century, Napoleon Bonaparte and a group of soldiers actually crossed this body of water at low tide. Now, Napoleon finds himself out in the middle of this mudflat a mile from shore when suddenly the tide starts to come back in. Does that sound familiar? Napoleon himself saw the comparison, and he said, had I perished in that manner in that place, like the Pharaoh, all the preachers of the earth would have had a magnificent text against me. Napoleon's reports, taken together with the depth chart data, suggest Moses could have simply crossed the Gulf of Suez at low tide. But Moses had the Pharaoh's army on his tail, which presents a problem for the theory. The problem is that the tides are too predictable. Moses might know the timing of the tides, but so too would the local Egyptian soldiers. It seems preposterous that Pharaoh's men would be foolishly caught out. We may be looking for a phenomenon that is more unusual and random or even unique. And fix their sights on another biblical region, the Nile Delta. Geoarchaeologists take sediment core samples from the delta to reveal the river's history. The core samples show that the Nile Delta is a very dynamic place. It actually changes shape as silt is deposited across this huge area. In the time of Moses, the Nile Delta had seven branches, and on the eastern side was the Pelusiac branch. We see that the Pelusiac branch of the Nile emptied into Lake Tanis a brackish coastal lake constrained by barrier islands bordering the Mediterranean. The Lake of Tanis could be the body of water that Moses crosses. This salty, shallow lake is the perfect habitat for a sea of reeds to grow. To decipher whether the Lake of Tanis was Moses' true escape route, experts build a 3D computer model recreating this ancient terrain. 
This offers a window into biblical Egypt and immediately throws up an interesting feature. There are two fingers of land reaching out as if trying to touch each other, making a land bridge. Is this where Moses parted the water? And if so, how did he do it? Experts search for a scientific explanation and find a clue thousands of miles from Egypt's Nile Delta. There's something we see in the United States called wind set down, and one place that gets it bad is Lake Erie. Straddling the border between Canada and the U.S., Lake Erie is frequently battered by storm force winds that press down on the surface of the water, pushing it eastward. You end up with shallow water at the east end of the lake and high waves battering the west end. The locals call these waves satius. Meteorological records from November 2019 show powerful winds blasting Lake Erie, forcing a difference in water level in excess of 10 feet from one side of the lake to the other. Never underestimate the power of wind. It is incredible to think that sustained wind can reshape water across thousands of square miles. Now, investigators look for evidence of wind set down around Egypt's Nile Delta and discover an account in British military records. The obscure report describes Lake Manzala located close to the Lake of Tanis. The Major General of the British Army wrote that a strong wind blew in from the east. The following day, the lake, around six feet deep, had totally disappeared. This is a modern account of wind set down, blowing the water away. To the locals, this would seem like a miracle. Scientists now ask if wind set down could explain Moses' parting of the waters. To test their theory, they use a supercomputer to model the effects of powerful winds on Lake Tanis. Modeling fluid dynamic systems such as this with accuracy requires a lot of computer power. They use the Blue Fire supercomputer over 4,000 water-cooled processors to simulate the complex atmospheric conditions over the whole world. It takes almost three hours to crunch the numbers. In the forensic tech lab, historian Sasha Auerbach has been given privileged access to the end result. This is the moment of truth. The phenomenon of wind set down on Lake Tanis. Is it fact or fiction? Let's get this started. Here's our model. Over here, the Mediterranean. This area here, Lake Tanis. The Blue Fire supercomputer is simulating a 60 mile an hour wind blasting Lake Tanis from the east for 12 hours. You can already see the waves starting to build up. What happens when we scroll time forward? All right, we're at the three hour mark and things are getting pretty wild out there on Lake Tanis. Up here, the eastern seaboard is starting to be exposed by the blowing winds. But down here, this dry finger of land is growing by the minute. It's extraordinary. The storm force winds are blowing so much water westwards that the shallowest parts of Lake Tanis are being exposed. The entire lake is steadily sloshing westwards. And boom, there you have it a fully formed land causeway nine hours into the simulation. Let's pause it here. And there is your crossing point. And if we measure it, it's two miles long and it's gonna last for about four hours. That's plenty of time for people who are running for their lives to cross. Then, as the wind dies, the water reclaims the land and things return to normal. And there you have it. One of the world's fastest supercomputers has simulated an ancient miracle. And it's telling us it's possible that the wind parted Lake Tanis. Computer modeling is offered a scientific explanation to Moses parting the waters. But there's more to the Bible story. As Moses makes it to safety, an army of Egyptian chariots pursuing him is engulfed. Scientists now consider an explanation why. The faster a river flows, the bigger the sediment it can carry. The waters of the Nile are powerful enough to shift coarse sand. In high winds, this sand probably dries out quickly, making a firm surface to walk across. However, the sand is no good for the chariots. Those heavy, thin wheels would likely cut into the sand and get stuck. The wind set down created a temporary passage through the waters but with their chariots lodged in the sand, 
the Egyptians ran out of time. Fluid dynamics tell us that when the wind dies down, the water returns rapidly, wiping out the chariots. After 2,000 years of mystery, geology, fluid dynamics, meteorology, and supercomputing finally offer a scientific theory to explain a biblical legend. In this case, we have a great example of religion and science working hand in hand to try to solve a mystery. But questions still remain, and many scientists are holding out for more evidence. The model shows us what's possible, but we still lack the physical evidence of what actually happened. If an entire Egyptian army was wiped out by these churning waves, we'd expect to find evidence. So far, none has been found. 